Thank you. Good morning and welcome to today's Cabinet meeting. This is not a public meeting, but a meeting the public can attend. I'm Ros Jones, Mayor of Doncaster, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's Cabinet meeting. Before we commence, I would like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. Due to COVID-19, I would like to remind all present of the requirement to maintain social distancing rules and wear a mask unless medically exempt whilst moving around the civic building. Masks can be removed once seated in the council chamber. We are not expecting a fire practice today. If the alarm sounds, please leave the chamber, then turn right and proceed down the stairway through the emergency exit on the ground floor. The assembly point is in the public square in front of CAS, beyond the fountain. Anybody with mobility issues should wait in the refuge area near the lift and use the intercom to call for assistance. This meeting will be recorded and published on the Council's website. By entering the Council Chamber, you are accepting that you will be recorded and your images will be retained and broadcast by the Council. If anyone intends to record today's meeting, please ensure this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting. Please ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. Thank you. I will now commence the meeting. Agenda item one, apologies for absence. I have two, which is councillors Joe Blackham and Phil Cole. Do we have any more, please? No, thank you. Item two, exclusion of the public and press. There are no items on the agenda where the public and press are to be excluded. Is that agreed? Item three, public statements and questions. We have no public questions today. Item four, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No. Item five, decision records from the meeting held 9th of March. These have been previously circulated and are for noting only. Agreed? Item six, to agree the service delivery model for public health services for five to 19 year olds. I will now invite Councillor Nigel Ball, Cabinet Member for Public Health, Leisure, Culture and Planning to introduce this item. Nigel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Health and Social Care Act of 2012 sets out a local authority's statutory responsibility for delivering and commissioning public health services for children and young people aged five to 19. This is primarily discharged via universal public health services implementing the National Healthy Child Programme. The 5 to 19 element of the Healthy Child Programme is led primarily by school nursing services, providing place-based services and working in partnership with education and other providers. Other partners key to the delivery of the Healthy Child Programme are services providing sexual health, substance misuse and smoking cessation. In Doncaster, these services are provided via an integrated service, Project 3, specifically developed to meet the needs of young people aged 11 to 18. What we want to do is we want to ensure we have services that are making the most effective use of limited resource to have the greatest impact possible. To this end, we have been exploring the potential to integrate the school nursing and Project 3 together into one delivery model with one provider overseeing provision of public health services for five to 19 year olds across Doncaster. Effective integrated pathways have the potential to provide a more effective and efficient health system truly centered on the service user and its communities. Our recommendation is to retender public health services for five to 19 year olds using this integrated service delivery model. We're sure that there may be teething problems and issues with this new service and the actual new delivery model. But we feel these issues are not insurmountable and that these provide the potential to provide an innovative, effective and efficient service offer for school aged children and young people. And it should outweigh any concerns. I recommend this report to Cabinet and seek to award a service contract for 5 to 19 age young people in terms of public health services. Thank you. Councillors, 
anyone wish to ask a question? Yes, Rachel. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to support the recommendation um, from my colleague, Councillor Ball. Um, as he's pointed out, we have, we have limited resources, and this is an ideal opportunity to use those resources to have the greatest impact. Integration is something that we've often talked about in Cabinet and from the parents' and children's point of view, having that one point of contact, that integration will clearly make a, a big difference. Um, and therefore, um, I support the recommendation to have this integrated service. Thank you for that, Rachel. Colleagues, anyone with further questions or statements? We are delighted to see that this will actually integrate these services and provide a better service out there. And we always know that as new services come together, there will be teething problems, but I'm sure these will be overcome efficiently and effectively. So thank you. If no one else has got any questions to ask, therefore, uh, I'll ask someone to uh, move the report after I read out the recommendations. So... The recommendations are that Cabinet consider the options for delivery model for public health services for children and young people aged 5 to 19, agreed to the commencement of a tender process to find a suitable provider or providers to deliver public health services for children and young people aged 5 to 19, support the extension of current contracts for public health 5 to 19 by four months to align with the academic year and approve the delegation of the contract award to the Director of Public Health in consultation with the portfolio holder and subject to compliance with council procedure rules. Is that moved, colleagues? Moved, Is that seconded? Thank you. <laughs> Therefore, it is agreed. Thanks very much. So it moves on to uh, item seven, which is quarter four, finance and performance. And I'll introduce this item. And the report focuses on quarter four for 2021 and details the council's outturn financial position. Against the backdrop of responding to the global pandemic, the performance achievements and financial position is remarkable. The council has demonstrated a one-team approach to delivering essential services and responding in novel ways to support individuals and communities. There are two documents which help provide the context. The first is COVID Roadmap, which provides the key milestones, and the other is included as Appendix A and lists the resources provided by government to support COVID initiatives. Colleagues, do we have any questions in respect of the quarter four report, please? Can I just say uh, that we do note the amounts of money has been asked to be approved to be carried over, and we would wish to see these actually monitored separately so we know that the spend is actually incurred, as we know it is a one-off carryover, and we will want to be able to see and a proper timeline given to this. Yes, Chair, can I further suggest that... Uh as portfolio holders, we are uh, regularly appraised of, of these uh, amounts and figures and you know, to know where we are going with this so we are uh, on, a, on a good financial even keel. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Nigel. Chair, just to add as well, um, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but, but we need to be, I feel, proactive in addressing areas of need, um, certainly in a timely manner. Um, and avoiding build-up. So, so one of the things I've noticed is, is there's obviously a, a 20k underspend on on planning. It'd be really good if we could maybe put this to use um, immediately in terms of thrusting forward on our um, ambition to get the master plans in place. Uh, th yes, th thank you, Chair. Uh, more than happy to pick that up uh, with colleagues. Uh, you'll know that we are looking at how we integrate all locality plans and that the Mayor's got an ambition uh, for a number of key master plans across principal towns in the borough. Thank you. I will now read out the recommendations within the report that Cabinet note and comment on quarter four performance and financial information, approve the environments in accordance with financial procedure rules as detailed in Appendix A, 
the financial profile, but I would add to this and actually give us monitoring throughout the year in respect of those carry forwards. Three, approve the signing of section 256 agreements with the clinical commissioning group, CCG, for projects with a total value of 3.346, as detailed within paragraph 45 of the report. Note the allocations of block budgets in the capital programme, detailed in Appendix A, financial profile in accordance with financial procedure rules. Note the carry forwards approved by the Chief Financial Officer detailed in the finance profile at Appendix A. Approve the allocation of 6.035 underspend in 21-22 as detailed within paragraph 140 of the report. Delegate the allocation of 2 million severe weather and road safety reserve to the Director of Economy and Environment an assistant director of finance in consultation with the mayor. And I would add that I would like to see this programme being brought forward very quickly, as we know we have problems on our roads. And delegate the allocation of 3.906 leisure fund to the director of public health and assistant director of finance in consultation with the mayor and portfolio holder. Colleagues, do we have that approved, please? Seconded? Agreed. Item 9, Performance Challenges, Doncaster Children's Services Trust, Quarter 4. Can I invite Councillor... I'll bring it in next. We're going to item 9. I'll go back to item 8. Performance challenge of Dongster Children's Trust, quarter four. Can I invite Councillor Angel Blake, Cabinet Member for Children's Social Care, Communities and Equalities, to introduce this item? Thank Rachel, please. You. Thank you, Chair. Um, throughout, through lockdown, the Trust has continued to deliver its services to children, young people, and families by working closely with Doncaster Council. Despite COVID and demand pressures, the trust performance remains strong across its contractual key performance indicators and strategic indicators in terms of timeliness and compliance. Our current improvement focus is on ensuring consistency of practice quality throughout the social care system across the Doncaster Borough. The impact of COVID has been felt most during quarters two, three and four. Between July to March 2021, the Trust saw an increase in referrals of 720, which is an increase in 24%. Children and family assessments by 886, which was an increase of 26%. Section 47s initiated, which was 451, and an increase of 56%. And children in care numbers from 517 at the end of January 2021 to 550 at the end of March 2021. The Trust only makes the decision to place children into care when other options have been exhausted and is in the best interest of the child. However, this increase places pressure on our placement costs and has meant an increase in use of out-of-area placements. We re remain committed to the partnership future placement strategy as a means of increasing local provision through growth of foster carers and our residential offer. The impact of COVID on children and families is clear with the increased level of demand for our support and increased complexity of need for those requiring social care intervention. The financial impact of COVID has been estimated at between 1.3 million and 1.9 million for 2020-21. This and other cost pressures will continue into 2021-22 and beyond. Ofsted conducted a focused assurance visit in February and broadly speaking the results were as expected with some new learning incorporated into our improvement plans. Inspectors praised the work of frontline staff throughout the pandemic and we anticipate the next inspection will take place in autumn. Caseloads in the Trust increased during quarters two and three due to the additional demand pressures, and the Trust and Council have taken action to reduce this pressure, including additional resources and redesign of the multi-agency front door for children. At the end of quarter four, K 
caseloads have reduced in accordance with our caseload policy. The Trust, with Council support, has developed appro approaches to reduce agency costs, including a social worker academy and a social worker attraction and retention strategies. The Trust and Council continue to invest in innovative practice, such as Mockingbird Paws domestic abuse navigators. We are also working in partnership with St Ledger Homes to deliver a local project designed to assist care leavers into independence by securing properties to rent and ongoing support to sustain independent living. The Doncaster Children's Partnership Recovery and Resilience Programme has been established to keep children and families safe, working with strategic safeguarding partners, including the council, police, health and schools. So I'd ask Cabinet to support the report and note the report. Thank you. Colleagues, any questions, statements? I certainly have one. We are all corporate parents and our looked after children are important to all of us. I would like to see stability for these children and therefore I would urge uh, them to get the appropriate accommodation as soon as possible as I am aware that it's been nearly two years and we've still not got the accommodation required. We understand that there's been great pressures on the services. We've had increased numbers having to come into care. And also working with the whole family will actually pay dividends in the long run. But uh, we really do want to see progression now on these areas. So therefore, I will read out uh, the recommendations. And that is that Cabinet note the progress of Doncaster Children's Services Trust performance outcomes and the contributions that the Trust makes to support the Council's strategic priorities. Is that noted? Thank you. We will now move back to item 8. My apologies for skipping this. Can I invite the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Glyn Jones, Cabinet Member for Housing and Business, to introduce this item. Thank you, Chair. Uh, before us today, we have the outturn uh, performance report from St Ledger Homes. Last year, we saw a significant drop in performance. At the start of the first lockdown period, much activity, especially routine repairs and lettings, was suspended for a period of approximately 10 weeks, in which time performance obviously dropped. Consequently, St Ledger were playing catch-up for much of the rest of the year and in some instances are as issues such as social distancing and operating safe working practices continue to impact on the day-to-day -day operation of St Ledger. That said, on a monthly basis, performance continues to return to more normal levels. Focusing on some of the uh, key performance indicators that are off target, KPI 2, void rent loss, and KPI 3, average number of calendar days to relet standard properties, performance in this area was impacted by a larger number of voids than usual going into the year because of the previous <coughs> year's flooding. The suspensions of lettings at the start of the pandemic and the need to reduce the number of repair staff in a building at any one time. Uh, as a result, the number of voids increased during the year. This has been steadily falling since Christmas and is still subject to very close monitoring. The average void period has also been falling throughout the year and we expect that to continue over the forthcoming months, uh, getting performance back on a month-by-month -month basis closer to target. Looking at KPIs 4, 5 and 6, which cover the homeless indicators, performance in these areas has been extremely challenging and is still problematic. Considerable work is taking place right across the Homelessness Partnership to address the increase in demand for support and we are still uh, starting to see these figures reduce from the highs experienced in the winter months. 
Looking at uh, KPIs 14, the number of tenants and residents helped into education and training. This indicator is considerably off target because the normal courses run by St Ledger World of Work programme were impacted by the suspension of training by Doncaster College in the first lockdown period and again post Christmas. So in conclusion, colleagues, if you have any questions you would like to ask me, I will endeavour to answer uh, those questions. I also have Dave Richman, Chief Executive from St Ledger Homes in attendance who can address any more detailed or technical questions or issues. Thank you colleagues. Colleagues, any questions or statements please? I will make one and uh, I'm sure you will guess what it is. Uh, I want to see concerted effort to bring down the voids because as soon as we get the voids down it creates a home for someone and therefore we will be monitoring this extremely closely. Having regard that Covid did actually prevent the number of workers going in but whilst ever they are still in the void that means someone's not got the opportunity to have a home. Therefore, the recommendations, if no one else has got anything to say, is that Cabinet note the progress of St Ledger Homes, of Doncaster's performance outcomes, and the contribution St Ledger Homes of Doncaster makes to supporting Doncaster Council's strategic priorities. Is that noted, colleagues? And therefore, colleagues, uh, I believe uh, that concludes the items of business on the agenda today. I would like to thank everyone for their attendance today and for their input. Before vacating the chamber meeting room, can I ask that everyone wears a face mask and you will be escorted from the building via the front stairwell if you are vacating the building. Can I ask that everyone wears the face masks while vacating this meeting room also? I will now close the meeting. <laughs>